Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. In this video we are doing part 2 of A Darkland Plane, the fourth novel of the Mortal Engine series. Part 1 will be in your link in the upper right corner. Before we go on, subscribe if you haven't, give us a like and drop us a comment and now let's get into the rest of it. So while the shadow aspect was making his escape, Shrike heard something fall on top of the airship and he went up and rescued Penny Royal and the other man had already fallen to his death. Meanwhile, Ola Thumbly and her fighters were chasing and shooting at them. But Stalker Birds came and surrounded the airship, forcing the fighters to turn back. Ononi spoke to the Green Storm Stalker Birds over the radio and they began escorting them back to a Green Storm base. Shrek asked Ononi why she did it to him, why she made it so he couldn't kill anymore. She claims she didn't. She wouldn't know how. She feels that he's developing a conscience from all the memories of when he was alive. Wolf Cobalt and his city of Harabaro have gotten back to the main city of Murnau. He sees his father, Von Cobalt, who was injured but will survive. So Wolf and Adlai Brown corner Von Cobalt into joining in on an attack on the Green Storm. And although he doesn't want to, but he doesn't want to be the only city that is not attacking. He doesn't want anyone to be able to call him a coward. The Shadow Aspect land at a Green Storm air base called the Windflower Airfield that was several miles behind the storm front lines. They were greeted by General Zhao. And it seems that the Green Storm mistakenly believed that it was Professor Penny Royal that saved Lady Naga. As they were speaking, that's when the traction cities began their attack all across the front line. As the attack begins, General Zhao herded Lady Naga and her companions to an airship so that they could escape. But Theo forgot the letter that Ren sent him and he ran back to get it. The airship takes off leaving Theo behind. Meanwhile, General Naga is listless and not taking control and it turns out that Cynthia is poisoning him, not enough to kill him but enough to keep him disinterested. She firmly believes that Stalker Fang will come back in time to save them. She kills General Dizu to keep him from revealing her secret. Meanwhile, Theo makes it back to the command bunker and gets Ren's letter and as he puts it in his pocket, there's an explosion that knocks him out. Stalker Fang and Fishcake, meanwhile, make it back to the house that Anna Fang once lived in. Once there, she tells Fishcake that she's going to build a radio transmitter that will send a message to heaven. Ren and Tom have joined in helping London work on their New London Maglev system. The first test of New London was not successful as it rose off the ground a little and then there was a crack some smoke and it fell back down. Hester finally comes through and she's upset when she realizes that they left Theo behind and they think that Theo is dead. But Theo was not dead. He was trudging east headed towards London because that's where Ren's letter said she was and he was going to go and be with Ren. Meanwhile, Stalker Fang has completed building her transmitter and has transmitted a message up to the satellite that is in orbit waking it up from its long sleep now odin is awake and waiting for orders theo meanwhile makes it to london and is captured by a group that ren is a part of theo ren and the others got back just in time to save her father from a probe by stalker birds theo told ren and tom that hester was alive and that she was with strike meanwhile in orbit Odin was gazing down on earth looking for the familiar cities that it knew and he couldn't find them. But one thing was familiar, it was receiving instructions. Odin then sent down a stream of fire from the sky that burnt all of the cities that were advancing along a line into Greenstorm territory. Olaf Thumbly, who barely survived, landed in Murnau and warned them that the storm had a new weapon that destroys everything that they must turn and run. General Naga, meanwhile, receives a message that his wife, Lady Naga, is alive. So he goes and confronts Rohini, who he now realizes was lying to him and trying to poison him. And as he confronts her, she shoots him, but his breastplate protects him. At the same time, a beam of fire comes down from the sky and burns the entire city. 
Odin wasn't just destroying traction cities, he was destroying everything. In London, the people watched the beams of fire come down from the sky and they deduced that it must be some ancient that is in orbit that the green storm has managed to get a hold and control of. Tom, who feels he hasn't done much for the people of London, decides since he hears that General Naga is a nice man, he's gonna go and talk to him and get him to stop using Odin. Wolf Cobalt, meanwhile, still intends to go and steal New London for himself. Some of the Green Storm soldiers believe that the fire from the sky means that Stalker Fang has returned and is burning everything to the ground and would have attacked Lady Naga if Strike and Esther wasn't there. But they were soon able to continue their journey headed towards Tianjin. Back in London, Ren wakes up and reads her father's letter and she runs to the airfield but she's too late, he's already gone. Meanwhile, she gives Angie her father's letter to give to Lord Mayor Pomperoy. But unfortunately for her, Lord Mayor Pomperoy is dead and Garamond, who never did like them, promptly arrest her for being a traitor. So Tom is on his way to see General Naga when he realizes that his idea of going and talking to General Naga out of using the weapon was probably a bad idea and he was about to turn around when some of the Green Storm airships surrounded him and captured him. So he gets to see General Naga after all and he tells him about London hoping to get General Naga to stop attacking London but since General Naga does not control the weapon, he can't do anything. So he tells Tom that he can wait there until Lady Naga comes and vouches for him and he promptly locks him up. Back in London, Mr. Garamond has been elected Lord Mayor after the death of Pomperoy and he intends to kill Theo and Wren as spies. But Lavinia Childermas helped them to escape. Lady Naga and party reaches the command center where General Naga is. Hester is taken to see Tom and Lady Naga goes to see General Naga. But General Naga is not happy to see her. He thinks that she's a traitor. He thinks that the Traction Cities have a new weapon and they're using it to destroy his cities. So he locks her up, planning to execute her when he gets back from London where he thinks the transmitter is so he can go to London and destroy the transmitter. When Hester reaches Tom, some soldiers that was favorable to Lady Naga freeze them and as they were escaping with strike, that's when Odin sends down another strike that hits a mountain nearby and the mountain begins erupting. Shrike now believes that Stalker Fang is the one that is responsible and if she's not stopped, millions of people will die. So he intends to go and try to stop her and Tom intends to go with him. And Hester goes along reluctantly. Theo and Ren were walking away from London when they saw the Howard Barrow coming up out of the ground. So Ren came up with a plan. She knew that the Howard Barrow was going to try and attack London. So she would go and get herself caught and try to delay them while Theo ran back to London and warned them. While Ren is delaying the Howard Barrow by leading it in the wrong direction, Theo meanwhile reaches the London ruins where two of the guards, Will and Jake, who are two kids, they meet him and he warns them that the Howard Bar is coming. At first they don't believe him, but then they hear the engines. And since there is no way that they're gonna get to the other end of the ruins where New London is, they hop on the airship, the Archaeopthreps, to get to the other end. But then they're attacked by Green Storm airships. The storm ships were General Naga and his troops and when they landed, they met with the Londoners and demanded to know where the transmitter was. Of course, the Londoners didn't know what they were talking about. Just about that time, Ren, Wolf and the Howard Barrow reached the outskirts of London. Meanwhile, Theo and Jake were the only ones to survive the crash of the airship that the Green Storm has shut down and they were running for their lives. Then Jake was killed when a small suburb crushed him. The Harabao, meanwhile, was disabled when it went into an area of the ruins where the Medusa lightning still fired off. Meanwhile, the Londoners showed General Naga New London, which is Maglev, and allowed him to examine it, 
showing him that they had no transmitter. About this time, the people under Harubaro realized that Ren had tricked them and they began chasing her. Ren, meanwhile, was being chased by Wolf, who, as he got close to her, seems to have gotten struck by one of his damaged couplers. And Theo, who had snuck onto the Harubaro when it got zapped, managed to find Ren. Meanwhile, the people under Harubaro managed to activate their reserve engines and began moving once again. That's when General Naka decided he was going to protect the people of London. To make up for his mistake, on board the Jenny Hanover, Tom and Hester make up. They found Penny Royal who had hidden away on their ship so he could escape with them. As the Jenny Hanover got close to Anna Fang's house, Stalker Birds attacked it. Shrike fell out of the Jenny Hanover while fighting a Stalker Bird. The Jenny Hanover then crashed with the Stalker Birds attacking it and Hester blew it up destroying it and them. Tom and Hester left Penny Royal tied up and they walked together up to Anna Fang's house. The first person they met was Fishcake who tried to stab Hester. She easily took the knife from him. Then Stalker Fang came out and grabbed her, leaving Tom helpless to do anything. Fishcake, who was angry with Tom and Hester for leaving him, tried to grab the knife, but Stalker Fang smacked him aside. Tom's heart was beginning to give out, and Stalker Fang noticed it, and she told Hester that Tom is dying. Then she said, soon everyone will die. Back in the ruins of London, Ren and Theo escaped from the harbour, and General Naga waited until all of the Londoners had climbed on to New London. He also sent some of his soldiers on the New London with them. They started the engines on the New London and it rose into the air and then out of the hangar doors. The harbour turned to give chase and Ren, while watching it, saw Wolf Cobalt came out of the same hatch that she and Theo climbed out of. Meanwhile, Stalker Fang had picked up Tom and carried him inside. When Tom came through, he felt a pressure on his chest as his heart was beginning to give out. He asked Stalker Fang why she is attacking both sides and she said she wants them to fight each other which will give her time to give orders to Odin so it can target volcanoes around the world. She expects that it will kill millions of people but in the end when everything has cleared the world will be green again. Fishcake finds Penny Royal and frees him. He tells Penny Royal that Pap Joy's yacht is still there but Anna Fang has the keys. Meanwhile, Shrike, who had fallen into a lake, was at the bottom and he woke up, walked out of the lake and began looking for Hester. Ren and Theo are on top of the Harrow and Wolf is on there with them and the Harrow is chasing New London and slowly catching them. On his airship, General Naga was lining up a shot at the Harrow while Theo was trying to fight off Wolf using a pipe against his sword. When he lost his footing and fell, Ren grabbed the pipe and began swinging it at Wolf, which broke his sword. He grabbed his gun and shot at Ren, but missed. But the rockets that the Green Storm had fired at him hit his guns on the Harrow and the shockwave knocked him into Ren's pipe, which went straight through him killing him. General Naga and his airship, the Fury, came alongside the Harrow and rescued Ren and Theo. He carried them and dropped them off on the New London. General Naga then ordered his men onto the second airship, the Protecting Vale, and he told them to help his wife find Stalker Fang, who has control of the new terror weapon, help her find it and destroy it. He also gave New London safe passage throughout their territories. Then he took off on the Fury by himself. He then charged the Fury at the Harrow who had already opened its jaws to eat New London and fired its rockets directly down into the Harrow which then blew up, killing everyone aboard the Harrow and taking out the Fury. Back in Anna Fang's house, Stalker Fang tells Tom that the ash from the volcanoes will choke out the sky and shroud the earth in darkness and winter will reign for hundreds of years and mankind will perish but life will survive, life will come back but there will be no more people 
people spoil things. Stalker Fang considers humanity a plague. Tom gives Hester her knife, she manages to free herself and begin helping Tom off the table. And Tom is doing the only thing he thinks he can do is try to talk sense to Stalker Fang so she would stop. Stalker Fang began using Odin's telescopic lens to search for New London and when she found it she zoomed in and began looking at the faces of the people and that's when Tom saw that Ren was alive and so was Theo. Tom to his very last kept begging Stalker Fang to stop and not to do this. He then began to appeal to Anna who he felt was somewhere inside of Stalker Fang. At that moment Stalker Fang's personality began alternating between Anna's personality and Stalker Fang's personality. The last command was put in and uploaded to Odin. That's when Penny Royal came in with a lightning gun and shot Stalker Fang who died falling and smashing the Odin controls. Meanwhile at this time Tom began to die. He fell to the ground with Hester holding him. Penny Royal grabbed the airship keys from Hester and went to get the airship so he can bring it close so they could rescue Tom. Hester dragged Tom out into the garden and as they looked up into the sky they saw a new star appear and they realized that it was Odin that had blown up, that Stalker Fang had ordered it to destroy itself. But as Penny Royal got into the airship, Fishcake ran up to him and put a knife to his throat and refused to let him go back to save Tom and Hester. He was still angry at the time they had left him behind. As Hester watched the airship fly away, she saw Fishcake looking down at her in triumph. Hester kissed Tom as he died and the last thing he heard was her voice saying, It will be alright Tom, wherever we go. Whatever becomes of us, we will be together. It will be all right. Subgeneral Tien came and got Lady Naga, led her outside, where, looking up into the sky, they saw shooting stars. That was when Oinoni Zero, Lady Naga, became the leader of the Green Storm. A few miles from Batman Gumpa, the airship engines failed, and Fishcake abandoned her and Penny Royal and went off on his own. After spending some time trying to fix the airship, Penny Royal went back and surrendered to the Green Storm, who promptly told him that he was free to go. The attraction city of Murnau settled on the hilltop west of the Rustwater marshes and became a static city. And refugees from Zhanshan started going down there and helping the Murmauners to lay out fields and plant crops. And Van Kolbert kept a few of his harvester suburbs and an air force to protect his people. Penny Royal wrote a new book where he tried to tell the truth but nobody would publish it because nobody believed him anymore. And when he didn't have any money to pay back from the advances they gave him for the last book, he spent some time in Debtor's prison. He ended up moving in with one of his former girlfriends, Minty Babsmack, and living out the rest of his life with her. Fishcake ended up going back to Satya, who became his foster mother. But when he grew up and had kids, he sometimes wished he had shown a little more forgiveness to the Natsworthies and would tell himself that he didn't kill them, he just left them behind to teach them a lesson. And since he was sure they survived because they were tough. Ren and Theo got married and with the money that Wolf had paid them for the expedition to London, they were able to buy a ship that they renamed the Jenny Hanover II. And they were going to be air merchants selling maglev furniture. She is sure that her mom and dad are dead and are together in the afterlife. And the Lady Naga had created the new Anti-Traction League that is at peace with the Traction cities. Shrike finally got back to the place where Stalker Fang died and he downloaded her memories into himself. He found Tom and Hester in the garden dead. Hester had killed herself driving a knife through her heart while holding Tom's hand. For a while he thought about taking Hester up to Oinoni Zero to resurrect her but then he decided that she wouldn't want that, she would want to stay with the one she loved. He took their bodies from the garden and carried them to the head of the valley where a river tumbled down and he laid them down together next to a stunted oak tree. Then he went and sat in a shallow cave 
so he could watch them. He then shut down all of his systems except his eyes and his mind. In time, an oak tree grew out of Hester's ribs. In time, a forest grew around him. Then one day, humans came and began putting things around his neck. That's when he began to awaken. But the awakening process took centuries. One day, he finally awakened. And standing in front of him was a small boy and girl. When he said hello, the little boy ran away, but the girl stayed. She spoke to him in a language he didn't understand, and she rubbed his joints with fat, and he was able to stand eventually. He then grabbed his hand and led him down into their village. There he began to decipher their language. In the village, the airships were made of wood and glass and moved with maglev technology. The sun was redder than it used to be. He told the people gathered around him that he was a remembering machine and they asked him to tell them. So he began telling them about the attraction city of London chasing a mining town. And that's how the book ends. I would like to thank you for watching and listening. Subscribe if you haven't. Give us a like. Drop us a comment. And I will see you in the next video.